Welcome to the second episode of Series 24, everyone. This episode, we get to finish up our characters for Visigoths versus Molgoths with designer Lucian Khan. But before we get to that, let's get into some announcements first. First up, do you know what week it is? That's right, it's Descent into Midnight Week. There's only a few days left until the Kickstarter opens up for business on Saturday, February 15th. That's 2020 for those in the future. We're both excited for this game, if you couldn't tell. So, definitely follow the Kickstarter leading up to the launch by going to dimrpg.io slash ks. That'll take you right to the Kickstarter page uh, where you can subscribe to get updates uh, for when it's first released. They've already released three character sketches on their Twitter, but it would be great to see at least a couple more before the main event. You won't want to miss out on this very special game. The last thing I'd like to mention before getting into this episode is that we are currently down to two reviews left to read before we run out of reviews to read. If you haven't left us a rating or a review, you can head to our show notes, which have links directly to the various platforms we are looking for reviews on, including Apple Podcasts and Podchaser. So, if you enjoy what we're doing here, you can help us out immensely by heading there and leaving a quick review, or even just a rating in the case of Apple Podcasts. Since Amelia isn't here right now, we'll just hold on to these last two reviews for a later day. With all of that out of the way, let's get on with the show. Enjoy. Character Creation Cast. We just began creating characters for Visigoths versus Molgoths. Lucian picked a theater tech goth. Amelia was creating a Visigoth runecaster. And I was creating a cyber pet goth. We're going to pick up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. Okay, so now that we got our character set, what's next? Great. So I will run you through the process. Um, So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to pick a name. Um, And I've made um, some suggestions for you. um, So you can look at the the suggestions. Can I just say, Um, I love the suggestion of Malemony. I can't even say it. (laughs) Malemony? (laughs) Malemony. I'm just thinking of a cat going, Malem. Malem, exactly. (laughs) Are you are you going to be Malamalay or is it too hard to say? I, I'm gonna. I actually. Uh, I have to go with my Sailor Moon roots and and go with Luna. Perfect. I don't know that I can pronounce any of these. <laughs> For nope, not even gonna try. I mean, the thing about the Visigoth names is like I I'm not sure how you pronounce them either, and I'm not sure who is sure how you pronounce them. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh. Just look up names from the four, t- four tens, and right. <laughs> and you will then do exactly what I did, uh-huh. <laughs> and find these names again. <laughs> I mean, is it Gilvira? That's a pretty good one, though. That sounds like a good guess for how you pronounce it. Yeah, I mean, I have a friend I, I, whose I daughter's name is Elvira. Yeah. So we're gonna go with we're just gonna assume Gelvira. Gelvira. I mean, because I don't think it's Gelvira. <laughs> so no. yeah, exactly. That would be the nineties version. Totally. That's um I think I'm gonna go um let's see. I think I'm gonna call my theater tech Velvet. Oh, beautiful. Awesome. All right. Okay, so the so the next step um after you choose the name 
is one second. Do, 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 do. Um, now, okay, so um, choose some pronouns from the list or come up with your own. Um, and you should know um, the Visigoth character sheets also include masculine, feminine, and neuter pronoun suggestions from the Gothic language um, for your convenience. So if you should decide um, that you would prefer your pronouns to be in Gothic, um, that is available to you as well. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm just going to go with she, her. Yeah. I don't want to have to pronounce anything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also going with uh, she, her for my character. I think Velvet, the theater tech, is a he, him. All right. Awesome. Okay, so we've got our pronouns. I have a, a question here listed. Great. I don't know if you, because you are all. Oh, yeah, you've got an extra You're both question. mall gods. Yeah, so you are about, have... you're about to see this question. What is that question? Are you still glowing from time travel? Yes, no, maybe a little. My, um, I mean, I think the answer is obviously yes. Yes. This is e- probably my favorite question of any character sheet. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so glad and honored. So yeah. I'm going to say yes, I am still glowing from time travel. Excellent. And that means whatever you think it means. I mean, I just think it means I look fabulous. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, so you automatically start with a plus two bonus on your dice rolls for three skills. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe you want to read those out. Um, in a moment, you will upgrade one of those to a plus three. So you can customize that a little bit mm-hmm. um, by bumping one of those up. So what do you have so far? Um, I have make invisible using a rune, levitate using a rune, and stun using a rune. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Uh, I have bite. Hack electronics and play dead. Nice. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So you can bump one of those up to plus three from plus two. I currently have costumes, pyrotechnics, and repelling or rigging. Um, I already know I'm going to bump up my costumes to plus three. Oh my God. Oh, obviously. Why would you pick anything else? Exactly. Although pyrotechnics can be really fun. That's true. I was originally going to go with hack electronics, but I I think I'm going to go into the uh lean into the pet uh motif and go with play dead yes i picked levitate because it sounds cool (laughs) good i thought about make invisible but then i was like no i don't want to be invisible i just really want to be seen if you're invisible you just want to be seen but like several feet above the ground (laughs) yeah right i need it well that's the thing is like i you know maybe i'm a little bit shorter and i need to like actually be seen get above the ground exactly that's really that's that's great those those 90s malls were packed full of people Gotta right? get above them. They, right. they really were. <laughs> okay. Then we have, um, so choose a goth style. So I have a list for you of some possible sort of fashion styles that you might have. <gasps> oh, um, okay. I'm so excited so you, about this. <laughs> so you can either choose one from the pick list or just make your own up. Oh, man. Can I, can I just say uh, the cyber pet powers once per day thing? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. Please say the once per day powers. Put on cute animal ears for an instant half price discount at any store. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> right? That's amazing. Uh, yeah, thank you. So, what's the uh, remind the listeners at home, um, Runecaster, what's your once per day skill? Once per day without rolling, carve a runic graffiti on a store wall and nobody will see you shoplifting from that store. Yes. <laughs> Um, And theater tech, I have once per day without rolling. Make a clothing item out of duct tape and give it to someone. This item gives the wearer a plus one or a minus one to the skill of your choice. Oh, my God. (laughs) That is so good. (laughs) Thank you. I'm very excited about this. Um, I'm really excited about the goth style. Oh, gosh. Goth style. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, goth style. There's a lot of good uh, options here. Dramatic gown, gold jewelry, and cape. Like, oh, this is so good. I, oh, man. Bone and sinew hoodie. Hmm. <laughs> there's a there's actually an origin story to that option. Um, I originally had bone and sinew armor on the list, and then um, I ran the Visigoth stuff past some people from the Society for Creative Anachronism, and um, they were like, 
one of the pieces of feedback I got was that um, Bone and Sinew Armor was laughably inaccurate. Um, and I decided that it would be better to make it even more laughably inaccurate. Um, <laughs> so I just upped it to Bone and Sinew Hoodie, and it is now the most popular choice on the Visigoth fashion list. Oh, oh my, my gosh. That's amazing. <laughs> I picked gold jewelry and cape, because if cape is a choice, how can you not pick cape? Mm-hmm. Yeah, cape is really good. Yeah, I, I went with cyber for my goth style. Perfect. I think um, Velvet's goth style is going to be vampire. Nice. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, I think he has like a, a real like um, Bella Lugosi, like classic vampire look with like the high, um, the high collared vampire cape. And, and but oh, it's made nice. out of like maybe um, like a red velvet, um, like theater curtain material. <gasps> Yes. Can it yeah. also like tie with like the like heavy gold tassels too? De- definitely. Oh yeah, with God. like the big um like f- floofy many string tassel thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what those are called. Um I'm sure perfect. there's a word for it. Someone yes. will let us know. The, the floofy tassels. Yes. Great. Perfect. Okay. So everybody has a goth style. Mhm. My mouse Great. just died. <laughs> no. no. I have a spare battery. <laughs> I just need Okay. To um now you get to pick a religion or no religion. Um and you can pick one from the list or come up with your own and you should also think about how seriously your character takes religion. Um and let me just say the reason why you might want a religion is um some fun like cultural things can come up because for example there is Hail Satan um the satanic bed and bath store. Um so for example if your if your character is like very religious um they might have a reaction to that either for or against. Um there's also a um a catholic gift shop called saint sebastian's catholic gifts yeah i like um, that you picked saint sebastian there do you want to- <laughs> yeah, yeah you noticed that did you <laughs> as, as someone who was raised catholic yes i did <laughs> yes um saint sebastian for for the listeners at home um is definitely the the most gay coded of all of the saints um very um very handsome very languishing um so we have saint sebastian's catholic gifts also um, is depicted bound Yes, exactly. Um, there's a lot of like random Jewish Easter eggs all over the mall. Um, I'm Jewish and put Jewish Easter eggs. I am saying Jewish Easter eggs on purpose. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I did put Jewish Easter eggs all over the mall. Um, so religion, if you if you if you give your character religion, um, it can have some fun interplay with with some of the things that are in the mall. Or you can make them not care about that at all. And of course, I gave you pick lists that are are likely for the different types mm-hmm. of goths. Yeah. So here's the thing. Uh, I know nothing about Germanic polytheism. <laughs> as a person, I mean, heretical Christian. I feel like maybe I kind of know something. Yeah. In the in the actual book itself, there's a little more explanation of these okay. things. But um, for example, um, the Visigoths. Um, if they were Christian, um, which they sometimes were, it was typically a um, a particular strain of Christianity that was considered to be heretical by Catholicism. Um, it, it's like a long story as to why, but the short version is that um, they believed that the Trinity was like not one whole combined thing, right? Mm-hmm. It, uh-huh. They were like the the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are actually three separate entities, not one combined entity. Oh, and you can't do that. That made Pope, Cap- Pope that made Catholic like that. that made Catholics really mad. So there was like a whole fight about this. Yeah. The Pope ain't about that. No, not at all. <laughs> but that's what the fight was about. It was about like the nature of the Trinity. Gotcha. It was it was that obscure. It's, all right. I, yeah. I think I'm gonna go with Unitarian Universalist. Perfect. All right. Perfect. And what about you? I'm going to go with um I'm going to play close to home. I think that Velvet is Jewish. Um we have Velvet the Jewish vampire goth theater <laughs> theater tech. Is there anything that you want to talk about here or like anything you feel like you need to work out or Um I think that I think that Velvet really um really hates hebrew school like he he doesn't have, he, it's not that he like has a problem with judaism he just like thinks that hebrew school is really boring and like should have a little bit more um like drama to it like if we're gonna go to hebrew school we're gonna study the torah like we should be like acting it out in like full costumes with like dramatic gestures and just do poetry. it like you mean it 
Exactly. Like he feels like his Hebrew school is like too low key and he wants it to be more extra. <laughs> As we've all often said about our experiences, but no. Yes, with with Hebrew school, yes. Right. <laughs> Look, I mean I did Catholic Sunday school, but it it could have stood to be a little more extra. Exactly. I mean, I mean, Catholicism's already pretty extra. Like, let's just lean into it. Catholicism has has some really good aesthetics, I must say. Um, it's, as far yeah. as the as the the you know the lushness of of imagery, it does. It's the one thing I miss about it. It's like the like it's over the top. It. I I certainly would say that um, the goth <laughs> the goth fashion movement was heavily influenced by um, many of the the decorative elements of, of Catholicism. <laughs> um. So did we have um? Did our cyber pet get a religion? You're a Unitarian Universalist. Yes. Yes. And what about the Runecaster? I picked heretical Christian. Perfect. Nice. Great. Okay. Um, okay, so now, right, we already know a little bit a bit about each other's characters. Normally, um, you know, you might have been doing this part quietly, and then we would introduce our characters so far so other players can get a general idea of who you are. Mm-hmm. Because what happens next um, is embarrassing traits. And the way embarrassing traits works um, is you are not choosing your own embarrassing traits. Oh, fun. We are choosing each other's embarrassing traits. And you're choosing embarrassing traits for people on the opposite side or opposite team. Mm. So Visigoths are picking embarrassing traits for Molgoths. Molgoths are picking embarrassing traits for Visigoths. There is some veto power. So if you don't like the embarrassing trait that you were given, you may veto it, but then you must take two embarrassing traits that you choose yourself. Oh, amazing. Oof. Yeah, so um, you do have some some you know you have agency over this, but um, you if you take the one that you're given, you have that. If you don't want it, that's fine. But now pick two. Um, so um, take a look. Do you have the embarrassing traits list? Uh, is, I don't think so. It is uh, on the character sheet document that we have. Oh, um, is it? Maybe I just need to scroll it's down, down there somewhere. Yeah, it's like second it. sheet from the bottom. Oh, yep, I found it. Great. So let's do it this way. Um, I need... uh, So first, why don't you choose ones for each other, and then we'll figure out what to do for me. Awesome. I think it'll be more fun, because you know each other. (laughs) Okay, so the Malgoth embarrassing trait options. That's what I'm giving to Ryan, correct? Yeah. Uh, Correct. Okay. Okay. So I was thinking uh, Bad Dancer. (laughs) Ooh. All right. (laughs) So you can either keep that or, or veto it and pick two. Oh, I'm very much for that. <laughs> Excellent. Um, but you Perfect. do have to say what kind of music is playing in the mall, so, right? So or that's, I have that's to say that. You don't, you don't have to say it right now. That's just okay. um, like when you're playing, those are some suggestions for like how you might use this mm-hmm. um, in, gotcha. in, a, in a scene. Yeah. Okay. Um, I am going to pick for Ryan, Terrible Poet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to keep it? Yeah. Or reject it. Yeah, that, yeah, no, that sounds good. Terrible poet is a really fun one to role play. Um, so uh, just throwing that out there. Like once you're in a in a game, if you're if you want to use your embarrassing trait to like embarrass yourself to make somebody else look cool, um, it can be really fun to just like make up terrible poetry. Oh, nice. Because um, we can all make up terrible poetry. It's terrible. So by right. definition, it's the um, only kind of poetry I can do. Right? Actually, yeah, I, I I trust everyone's ability to make bad poetry. So, oh my gosh. um, so that can be really fun in role play. I make I okay, make haikus uh, like a lot. So <laughs> that's amazing. Making very Perfect. bad haikus would be amazing. Yeah, it's I think also they're always f- just like one syllable too long. Yeah, oh, that's perfect. <laughs> so oh, no. close. Oh, it would hurt so bad. That's so good. <laughs> Five, seven, six. <laughs> it can also be fun to just like grab a poetry book or like Google a poem and just like mess up a poem that already exists. Mm-hmm. Just run it through Google Translate back and forth. Yeah, and see what exactly. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah. For the listeners at home, some of the other embarrassing trait options: um, Visigoth possible embarrassing traits include things like allergic to metal, which can be really bad if you have metal armor um uh i really like fear of animals there are um actually a lot of animals in the mall this may be surprising but it's true um partially because of the store gerbil essences um which is a (laughs) is a salon for both humans and pets um there's also a pony ride store called tiny yotun adventures um (laughs) so there are ponies in there um yeah wish you were roman is a good visigoth embarrassing trait um 
and then mall goth embarrassing traits some of the ones i really enjoy um bad taste in music is classic um uh, don't understand slang is really fun because you can start saying things like gadzooks or heavens to Betsy. Um, and then people think you're uncool. Uh. Um, overprotective parents is really fun for obvious reasons. Um, a lot of people end up playing this as um, like getting a message from your mom and dad on the loudspeaker or like if you have a pager or someone like your oh. parents keep paging you or they like <laughs> show up. It can be really fun. Um, prep school student is really fun for mall goths. Um, if you were a uh, mall goth in the nineties and you went to a prep school, that was not cool. That was embarrassing. Um, <laughs> so your, um, your friends, if they found out that you went to a prep school could be like ha 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 you're actually preppy you're not goth i like um, that it says reveal your school uniform school cheer or expensive graphing calculator <laughs> yes <laughs> yep it's like oh no you have a ti-83 you're not goth oh, no. Oh, um, no. so that's really fun um so those are some of the fun options um cool does anybody want to give me an embarrassing trait let's have the visigoth give me a ver- an embarrassing trait mm-hmm. um I mean, I'm gonna go with don't understand slang. That's great. I love that. I love, that. I love the idea of my of my vampire theater tech um, being like heavens to Betsy. <laughs> right. Well, maybe because you're a vampire, you're immortal, and you know heavens to Betsy. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you just don't want you want to pretend you're immortal yeah. at least. I just want to tell everybody at home now that we're now that we're talking about vampires. Literally, my ancestors are actually Romanian. Um, I the place that my my family is from is like a six hour drive from Transylvania. Um, oh, so, so I feel very, very close to, to Dracula. And have you been there? Have you um, been to visit? I actually, weirdly enough, I have been there. Um, oh. I have my mom and I went, when I graduated from undergrad, um, my mom and I went on a trip to Eastern Europe to like see sort of where, um, our family was from. And so I have cool. actually been to Transylvania. Neat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, I want to suck your blood. Um, let's go to the next start thing. So we have embarrassing traits. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, let's go to, sorry, I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Um, so now we can get some background about um, relationships that already exist between characters. And this is optional. So um, if we were playing this for real, like we were going to do a, a, a one shot or a campaign, um, you could quick start, just stop right here, right? Mm-hmm. Quick start, we're starting. Um, but if you have a little more time, and since this is about character creation, you can go on to the next step, um, which is about starting relationships. So the idea here is that all of the player characters know each other from the mall, um, some more intimately than others. So you can choose two of the four starting relationship sentences that are available to you. Um, and you could make one about a Visigoth and one about a mall goth mm-hmm. um, and um, sort of come to a consensus together about um, what some of your backstory is. Okay. So you're going to choose two. There are yeah. four available for you. Um, pick the two that are the most interesting to you. Um, and you can make one about one of us and one about the other of us because there's only three of us. Ryan, what is your character's name? Uh, Luna. Luna. Okay. I should probably make a note of uh, both of your characters' names. Yeah, my, na- my name is Velvet. And I'm Gelvira. <laughs> I love Gelvira. <laughs> That's amazing. Is that spelled with a G? Yep. That's amazing. Yep, it's Elvira with a G. That's amazing. <laughs> it's like even more Elvira than Elvira. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, to Elvi- extra, to El- extra. To Elvira, to Elvira. My questions are so great. I, I know, they're all very good. I don't know good. which one to pick. <laughs> mm. I'm going to go with the Molgoth I most resent is because. But now I have to pick which of you do I resent most. And why. And why. And why? I'm going to say I resent Velvet the most. Why do you because, resent me? Um, because you've stolen my cape look. Oh, yes. <laughs> you, think I'm a, you think I'm a biter. That's perfect. Because I'm a vampire. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. Do you remember, or I don't know how old anybody is, but do you remember when people would accuse people of being a biter? I do not. That was a thing. Um, I don't even know if it made it past the West Coast, but if you, you called someone a biter, it meant they were like like stealing your style or stealing your oh my gosh. thing. It's like, you're a biter. You're copying me. Rude. Yeah. 
I always wonder if it's like a thing that like I'm too young to know or I just don't know because I was like super sheltered growing up. So I get totally. like zero pop culture references either. And I'm yeah. like, then maybe could, that's a thing people know. I have it, no idea. <laughs> it, it could also be regional. Like I have no idea if it if it made it past right? Los Angeles. All right. So I said that I present Velvet because he stole my cape look. That's amazing. Um, I'm going to say that... Um, I'm going to say that um, Luna is still mad at me because I accidentally set fire to her. um, I accidentally set fire to her favorite um, squeaky toy fire hydrant. Oh, Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's amazing. (laughs) Okay. Um let's see. I think I'll go with the um my crush on so and so weirds me out because mm-hmm. um yes, so- I'll leave forward. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, Tell me more. I'm, I'm going to go if this is all right uh with uh Jelvira. Okay. Uh, my crush on Jelvira weirds me out because she can levitate. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, let's see what else we got. Yeah, so we each get one more. Yeah. Once when I was invisible, I saw Luna in the middle of secretly something. Hmm. What were you doing secretly? <laughs> uh, I'm going to say secretly graffitiing some of that bad poetry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love that. Oh, that would be nice. Okay. I'm going to say that um, I once helped Galvira dress up in a disguise um, because she um, wanted to um, she wanted to sneak into a Molgoth party to spy on the Molgoths. Oh, <gasps> and you helped? And I helped. You traitor. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, um, that's, that's the whole challenge bit right exactly. there. Exactly. <laughs> so so if we were to play this out, we might find out why. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. My second one would be, um, I wish I could be so-and-so's pet, so Velvet's pet, uh, because <gasps> yes, <laughs> because he makes uh, great futuristic pet toys. Oh, my God. Perfect. <laughs> I love that I both set fire to your to your fire hydrant toy, and you're like, "But please make me futuristic pet uh-huh. toys." That's Maybe that's why you set fire. This is no yeah. Good. yeah. This I is better. This is old and and useless. <laughs> this is this is too old, and it's getting kind of grungy. We need exactly we need a better one. That's probably that's why. That's probably why I forgave you is uh, after you made me a a, a new toy. <laughs> So I'm just very dramatic about how I express displeasure for for aesthetics. I'm <laughs> yes. just like, oh, this this toy is worthless. I set it on fire. I will make you a new one. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Great. Um. So, w- were there any left? Is that it? I think that's all of them. Yeah. No, I think we that's it. So that's character creation. You now have characters. Um. Your character sheet also has on it some stuff that you have. Mm-hmm. Um. Your equipment is just called stuff. Um, so you have some stuff, you have some dollars, um, cause this is a, in fact a functioning mall, so you can buy goods and services. <laughs> um, so you have dollars, um, and then you have a space for your hurt feelings if your feelings get hurt and that's it. That's amazing. Amazing. This was so yes. much fun. Yay. I love our people. Yay. Oh, also I should mention, um, we all see this, but you don't see it at home. Everyone is 16. So if you're um, if you're a player character, you just are 16. Um, so this means if you're a Visigoth, right, um, you are s- still only 16. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. But still glowing from time travel. Still glowing from time travel. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's it. That's the characters. We did it. Okay. We did it. How much money do each of you, each of you have? I start with. 25. I have fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. I, I only have twenty five dollars. I only have twenty five <gasps> as well. Oh, yeah, I am wealthy. But I, yes. and I have um, a bag of blank rune stones and a small hammer and chisel. Yes, oh, my my stuff's better. I got cute animal ears and a collar and leash. Oh, it's <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> I love Cyberpet. Oh, Cyberpet's very good. This is so much fun. Yay! I'm so glad you had fun. This is a lot of fun. 
Anything else that we we want to talk about with these characters before we? I'm good with I'm good with mine. Anything? Did anybody else have anything else? I don't think so. I mean, obviously, later we'll have to do our fan fiction portion when we get to That's that. That's true. But oh yes, God, please. <laughs> we will. Yeah. All right. Well, Lucian, thank you so much for joining us for our Visigoths and Mal- versus Malgoths character creation episodes. Thank you for having me. This has been a delight. Mm-hmm. Do you want to remind people where they can find you? Yes. Um, so I am extremely online um, on Twitter um, at Otheogony. That is spelled O-H underscore T-H-E-O-G-O-N-Y. Um, so if you want to follow my um, ridiculous posts about my cat being a podcaster or find out about my game design, follow me on Twitter. Um, you can find a lot of my games available for sale at necromancy.itch.io. Um, but if you forget that, um, you can just find it from my Twitter again. Um, and Visigoths versus Malgoths is currently available for pre-order um, on Backer Kit. You can just Google Visigoths versus Malgoths and you will find it very soon on um, Backer Kit. So those are um, up as well. Very cool. We'll put links all, to all of that in our show notes mm-hmm. too. Yes. So people don't have to remember how to spell things or anything. Like that. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. Thank you to everyone for listening. And please join us on our next episode for our discussion block. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the OneShot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like System Mastery. System Mastery is a delightful stroll through the history of role-playing games. Except the games are terrible, and the hosts are real jerks about everything. Join hosts Jeff and John as they explore the weirdest games ever made to talk about what worked, what went wrong, and which Silverhawk was the best? It was Hot Wing. Don't even add us. Find their shows at systemmasterypodcast.com or oneshotpodcast.com. Finally.